Hey guys, Andy Robertson here, back again with Greenbelt Academy, and I am so incredibly excited for today's video. You know, gauge R and R is a really important topic in Lean and Six Sigma and quality engineering, and so I'm excited today to start a three-part series to teach you all about gauge R and R. Now, today is the first in a three-part series, and what we're going to start with is all of the key terms and definitions that you truly need to understand before you ever run an experiment or before you ever interpret the results of, of a gauge R and R. That's what we're going to cover today. Let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's take a look at today's agenda. So like I mentioned, right, this is Greenbelt Academy and we're preparing for the Greenbelt exam and gauge r and is one of these really important topics on the Greenbelt exam. Now, if you are preparing for the Greenbelt exam, what you'll know is that that exam is structured according to the DMAIC process, define, measure, analyze, and prove control. And as part of the measure process in DMAIC, we're measuring our problem, we're measuring our product, and we're measuring our process. And so considering your measurement system is a really important part of measuring your product and measuring your process, which is how this all ties into kind of the Greenbelt body of knowledge. Now, today's video is not just for, for Greenbelt uh, exam takers. It's also for people preparing for the Black Belt exam or the CQ exam. When I put together today's video, I had everybody in mind because I wanted to cover and I wanted to help as many people as possible. Now, in terms of today's video, what exactly are we going to cover? We're not going to cover the entire gauge R and R topic in one single video. So I wanted to break this up into a three part series. Today is all about kind of the terms and definitions and basic concepts within gauge R and R. What, what is measurement system variation? What is repeatability and what is reproducibility? And how does that tie into important measurement terms like precision and accuracy? All of that, the fundamentals is today. In the next uh, video in the series, we're going to go through the average and range method. I'm going to give you an Excel template that has all of the formulas, and I'm going to walk you through how to conduct a gauge r and and how to calculate things like repeatability, reproducibility, and gauge r and as well as part-to-part -part variation and total variation. Now, doing those calculations is not enough. The third video series, the third part of the series, is all about interpreting your results. You've done the gauge r and r you've done your experiment, you've got your results. Is your measurement system capable for its intended purpose? That's going to be video three in this three-part series. But today is all about the basic terms and definitions in a gauge r and r or measurement system analysis. Okay. With that said, let's get into actually today's lecture. So what is measurement system analysis? I love to explain it like this. Measurement systems... Think about the systems you use, calipers, micrometers, weigh scales, all CMMs, whatever measurement system you use, all measurement systems have variation just like every other process. Oftentimes, we as green belts or black belts or quality engineers, we're very much focused on the process that we use that produces our product. Turning machines, drilling machines, CNCs, molding equipment, I don't care what it is, generally we tend to get hyper-focused on the process itself and we tend to forget that the way we take measurements can also introduce variation into our data set. So think about all of the different ways that you take measurements electrical measurements, weigh scales, temperature, uh, dimensional measurements like micrometers, calipers, hand tools, CMMs, things like that. There's all sorts of different ways that we take measurements. And those measurement systems all have variation just like every other process. And so the point of a, of a gauge r and is to essentially measure or, or calculate or quantify the variation that, that comes from our measurement system. So let me give you an example. Let me make sure you absolutely understand this idea. Let's say, for example, you turn a part on a lathe, and then you take that part and you measure the, let's say, a, the diameter of a hole that you drill into, let's say, a piece of aluminum here, okay? And let's say you went out and you, you drilled 50 holes and you took 50 measurements, okay? And here's all the data that you collected. You could take that data and you could throw it into, I don't know, Excel or Minitab or whatever, and you could create a histogram to help you visualize the variation in this data set, okay? And one of the mistakes that, that we often make as continuous improvement professionals or quality engineers is to assume that all of that variation comes from the equipment itself, comes from the, the turning machine itself. And that is true. A large chunk of that variation will come to us from the process. That is absolutely true. But sometimes, in, in some situations, we oftentimes get variation that comes to us from the, the measurement system itself. And that is the point of a gauge r, r We do a gauge r, r we analyze our measurement system to quantify how much variation is coming from our measurement system versus how much of our variation actually comes to us from our product and our process. And a lot of this comes back to, are we using the right measurement system? And of course, in the third part of, of this series, I'm going to show you how to take your measurement system variation 
and make a conclusion as to whether or not your measurement system is capable for its intended purposes. And I'm doing a bit of foreshadowing here, and we're going to cover this all of this in the third video. But for a measurement system to be considered capable for its intended purpose, your measurement system variation, right, the, the variation that comes just from your measurement system should be small. It must be small. And in an ideal world, our measurement system wouldn't contribute any variation. But of course, in, in practicality, that's never the, the case. And so our measurement system must be small relative to one of two things. And of course, we'll talk about this in the third video. Either your design tolerance, right? It should be small relative to your design tolerance, or it should be small relative to your process variation. That's a bit of foreshadowing. We'll come back to that in the third part of the video. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what an actual gauge r, &R is and how how we set it up and how it works, okay? So here's a definition I love to give people for measurement system analysis or gauge r, &R. I love to use the analogy of a DOE. A gauge r, &R is essentially a DOE that we do to quantify the variation or the precision associated with your measurement system, okay? And we do that to determine if our measurement system is capable for your needs. If you're designing a new uh, product or process, if you're trying to improve an existing product or process, you should spend a second ensuring that the way you take measurements, your measurement system is capable for our intended needs. Now, I love the DOE analogy. I love this DOE analogy because in a DOE, we essentially identify important factors and then we, we measure the impact that those factors have on a particular response. And in the world of a gauge r, &R there's two primary factors that we study, right? In, in a gauge r, &R there's two primary factors that contribute or cause variation in a measurement system, okay? And the first is the equipment itself. So let's take this example here. Remember, we've got our calipers and we're measuring the diameter of this hole or whatever. Part of the variation that we measure will come to us from the equipment itself. Every piece of equipment, weigh scales, calipers, micrometers, CMMs, I don't care what piece of equipment you're using, has some level of inherent variation associated with that piece of equipment, okay? And when we do our gauge r, &R part of that study is going to be to quantify how much variation is specifically attributable directly to the piece of equipment. The second factor that we study in a gauge r, &R is the variation that comes to us from the operators. Most, if not all, measurement systems that we use today have some level of human interaction. And we quantify that in a gauge r, &R using this, this concept called reproducibility. Now, the reason that I love a gauge r, &R is because when it's all said and done and you've, you've done your analysis, you've done your assessment, if it looks like your measurement system needs improvement, the, the actual gauge r, &R process tells you what the source of variation is. Is it your equipment? Is it your operators? What do you need to focus on to make those improvements and improve your measurement system? Now, we're going to spend the bulk of the rest of the video talking about repeatability and reproducibility and how we can combine those two factors to calculate the, the gauge r, &R or the measurement system variation associated with our equipment. Before we do that, though, one thing that's really important for you to understand, especially because we're talking about measurement systems, is the difference between precision and accuracy, okay? So let's cover that really quickly. I made this statement. Look at, look at this statement here that I made on the screen. I made this statement that said that basically we do a gauge r, &R to confirm that uh, whether or not our measurement system is capable for our needs, okay? That statement is true, but it's technically a half-truth, okay? And let me tell you what the full truth is. For a measurement system to truly meet our needs and be considered a capable measurement system, it has to have two specific attributes. First, it has to be accurate, and then it has to be precise. And so I wanted to, I wanted to cover this because I want to make sure you understand how a gauge r, &R impacts accuracy and precision, okay? And the truth is, is that a gauge r, &R doesn't impact accuracy. It only impacts precision. In fact, if, you, if you're not totally clear on the differences between accuracy and precision, we cover that in my, in my courses, the CQE Masterclass, the Greenbelt Masterclass, the Black Belt Masterclass. So definitely go there and check that out if you want to learn more about accuracy and precision. But the bottom line is, is that before you ever conduct a gauge r, &R you should calibrate your measurement system to ensure that it is accurate. You have to be accurate first, and then you have to worry about precision. Once you've calibrated your measurement system, you can then perform a gauge r, &R to quantify the precision or the variation 
associated with your measurement system. And that's why that's why I show you this whole slide, because I want to make sure you understand that a gauge r and is specific only to precision and not the accuracy of your measurement system. Now, when you think about the precision of your measurement system, there's two component parts, right? And this is what I talked about on the previous slide. The precision of your, your measurement system has two parts, repeatability and reproducibility. And let's talk about that right now, starting with repeatability. Okay. I love to start this off with a really basic definition, okay? Because when you hear the word repeatability, when you see this term in a mini pr tab printout or, or some other report, you have to make sure that you understand that repeatability, that value, reflects the variation that can be attributed directly to the measurement gauge itself, okay? So again, think about your calipers, your micrometers, your weigh scales, your CMMs. All of that equipment has some level of inherent variation, and we quantify that by measuring the repeatability of our measurement system. Now, the question becomes, if, if we think about this like a DOE, how do we specifically quantify the variation that is directly associated with the measurement system itself? And we do this by conducting our gauge r, &R under what we call repeatable conditions, okay, repeatable conditions. And essentially what that means is that all other elements, all other factors in the experiment are held constant and blocked out. And so, so in practice, when we actually do a gauge r, &R what that looks like is we're going to have a single operator measure a single part multiple times. Imagine you did this. Imagine you had a single operator take a single pair of calipers and measure a single part 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, 100 times. If you looked at that data set, there would be some variation from measurement to measurement because that measurement system has some inherent variation. And so in the next part of this video series, in part two, when we actually go through the average and range method, we are going to have a single operator, a single appraiser, appraiser A, take a single part, sample number one, and take three replicate measurements, right? We're going to have a single operator measure a single part multiple times. And what we're going to do is we're going to quantify the variation in just that piece of data, right? Because that's where we've blocked out all the other elements of the experiment and essentially measured the variation that is inherent to that piece of measurement equipment. Now, here's another term that you have to be familiar with. If you're reading a textbook or you're looking at a mini tab report or whatever, repeatability is often called EV or equipment variation for short because what it reflects, and, and again, this is the point I made up here, is that it reflects the inherent variation specific to or attributable to the measurement system by itself. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say repeatability is just the variation within the measurement system itself. The second element of precision is reproducibility, okay? And when you see that term reproducibility, whether it's in a textbook or a mini tab report or something else, repeatability reflects the variation in your measurement system that comes from or is caused by different operators, okay? And, and we refer to it as between operator variation. And so again, if you're looking at a, in a textbook or a mini tab report or whatever, reproducibility is often called appraiser variation, okay? It's the variation that comes from different appraisers. Now, you'll hear me often call this operator variation because I, I've just never called them appraisers, and, and, and both terms are used, appraiser variation or operator variation. Now, in the actual gauge r, &R activity itself, essentially the way we measure this is we take multiple operators and we ask them to measure multiple measurements. And what we do, and I'll give you an example of this, is we give 10 parts to appraiser A. We say, hey, measure all 10 of these parts. And then we do is we take those same 10 parts and we give them to appraiser B. Now, again, in a perfect world, there would be no difference between operator A and operator B. But again, we know that sometimes operators can be a source of variation with our measurement system. And of course, I'm showing this as a drastic difference between appraisers, but this is essentially how we measure it. We give the same parts to two different people, and we say measure them, and we look at the difference between those two appraisers. Now, when we do our gauge r, &R we're actually going to include a third person. We're going to use three operators. And remember, the difference between those, those appraisers, those operators, is what we call reproducibility. It is the variation in our measurement system that comes to us from the different operators who use our measurement system. Now, in this picture, I'm showing these as kind of three drastically different data sets. In in practice, you know, they're going to be they're going to be much closer, much tighter to each other. Uh, and again, in a perfect world, there would be no uh, operator to operator variation. But of course, we do see that in practice in the real world. Now, once you've quantified repeatability and reproducibility, you can combine those two parts to calculate the overall 
gauge R&R or measurement system variation associated with your equipment, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So measurement system variation has two components, repeatability and reproducibility. Now, to help you understand the equation that I'm about to show you, I want to go back to the, the definitions, okay? Repeatability reflects the variation attributed to the measurement gauge itself. And next to the word variation, I've added the Greek symbol sigma because that is how we measure standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of variation. Okay, remember six sigma is, is six standard deviations. It's, it's a measure of variation within your process. The same thing is true for reproducibility. It reflects the variation, there's that key word here, caused by different operators. So if we want to combine repeatability and reproducibility, we have to add together two different, essentially, sources of variation. Here's that equation. Measurement system variation, which is called gauge R and R, is shown here. I'm, show, I'm showing it as a variance term. So sigma squared, that's a variance term. You, the variance of your gauge R and R is equal to the variance of repeatability plus the variance of reproducibility. The reason that I show it in the variance term is that when you're adding together two different sources of variation, you have to do it in the variance term, and then you can convert it into the, the standard deviation form. Now, of course, you can quickly do that by simply taking the square root of both sides of this equation, and so you can take this gauge r, &R equation and convert it into a, a, a similar uh, calculation where essentially we're calculating it as a standard deviation instead of a variance. You'll also know that, and notice here that I've changed the words repeatability with equipment variation, just to give it a little bit of shorthand. And I've, I've also replaced the words reproducibility with appraiser variation because, again, a lot of textbooks show it as EV and AV. And so I want to help you make that connection between repeatability and equipment variation. The other thing I do definitely want to highlight is I want to talk about the variance and the standard deviation term because if you're looking at a Minitab report, this can be confusing. This can get people tripped up. And the easiest way to tell whether or not you're dealing with variance or standard deviation is to look at the units of measure. So remember, your standard deviation calculation will have the same units of measure as your original measurement. So if you're measuring parts in length and you're measuring them in centimeters, your standard deviation will have the same units of measure in centimeters. But when you get the variance term, it's always squared, right? It's always centimeter squared. So again, if you're looking at, at a practice exam, if you're looking at a, at a printout or whatever, look at the units of measure and make sure you know whether or not you're looking at variance or standard deviation because one thing that gets people tripped up is they start adding together standard deviations with variances and they get it all confused and they end up making a mistake. So that's something really important to keep in mind. That is actually it for today's lecture. So the next steps, the next two videos in the series, in the very next video, we're going to actually walk through the average and range method. I'm going to give you an Excel spreadsheet that has all the calculations built in. I'm going to show you how to design your gauge on R execute it, collect the data, and calculate repeatability, reproducibility, your gauge R&R, &R, your part-to-part -part variation, and your total variation. And then in the third part video series, I'm going to show you how to interpret those results. Is your measurement system capable of its intended purpose? And to do that, I'm going to show you how to do the precision tolerance ratio. I'm going to show you what that calculation is and, and what, how to visualize it. And I'm going to show you the percent of total process variation. Definitely check out those next two videos too because I'm going to actually give you that, that average and range Excel spreadsheet that actually will help you walk through the calculation. If you want to keep going as a Greenbelt and you want to get more resources, head over to greenbeltacademy.com. I've got practice exams. I've got study plans. I've got cheat sheets. I've got all sorts of stuff to help you on your Greenbelt journey. The other tool that I absolutely love to talk about is this free, free course. I call it the top 10 topics on the Greenbelt exam. It covers the most important topics topics that you'll definitely see on exam day. It's a completely free course. I've got video lectures, practice exams, and downloadable PDFs that you can actually bring into the Greenbelt exam with you. Definitely check that out. Head over to greenbeltacademy.com slash free course to get that free course. Uh, and again, if you love this, do me a huge favor, hit that like button. That way I can help as many green belts on that green belt journey. And if you want to get the second part in this video series, hit that subscribe button. That way when I publish that video, it gets sent to you and you can continue learning and continue growing and stay on that green belt journey. Anyways, that is it for me. Again, I hope you loved it. Stay tuned for that next video and I will see you later. Bye.